Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about materials used in <coughs> electronics devices. Now, why it is so important to discuss about materials? Because as far as the entire syllabus is considered, it may be diodes, it may be transistors or it may be microprocessor. The most important part comes is different types of materials to be used. And in that case, we have to discuss about their properties, their features, and their features. And therefore, in this video, we are going to discuss about materials. Now, basically, uh, we have three types of materials that are being widely used as far as any industry is considered. Let's see them one by one. The first material I'm writing it here, as we all know, is a conductor. While it's exactly opposite material that we are going to use, it will be the insulator, and in between that we have semiconductor. So basically, there are three types of materials that we are going to use: conductor, insulator, and semiconductor. Now let, let us define the first one as conductor. So how do you define conductor? A good source of electricity. Okay, a good conductor of electricity i can write a good conductor of electricity is basically called as conductor so you can have several examples like uh, we have copper aluminum we have gold or we can again uh, note it down as metals also or you can take example of water also so these all are examples of can put here these are the examples of conductors. Now, when I come at all the next uh, point uh, discussing about in the insulators, so the definition is exactly reverse a very poor conductor of electricity is called as insulator. As far as the examples are considered, so we have examples. <clears throat> which are being used in day-to-day -day activities. Uh, it may be wood. It's a bad conductor of electricity. We all know. Uh, similarly, we have carbon, or we can uh, write it down as diamond also. These are the few examples of insulator. Okay. Uh, so we have seen conductor as well as we have seen insulators. Now, when I consider across the most important point, and that is the semiconductor. Which has been or the key feature to be discussed. So I can write semiconductor is a material whose conductivity whose conductivity lies between conductor and insulator. So such kind of materials are known as semiconductor. We can even write it as semiconductor has a conductivity less than conductor and it has greater than insulator. So, in this way, I can note it down as the semiconductor. Now, the, as far as example is considered, so most widely used semiconducting materials are, the first one is called as silicon and the second one is called as germanium. Remember, these are two important points or examples of semiconductor. The first one is the silicon and the other one is germanium. No. Out of these two, the most widely used semiconducting device will be silicon. Now, you may be uh, surprised that there must be uh, in several exams they have asked a question like why silicon is most widely used semiconducting device. So the reason why silicon is most widely used semiconductor device is its availability in nature. Due to its availability in the nature, silicon is most widely used semiconductor device. <clears throat> in many of the examination, I already told you, uh, they asked this question repeatedly. Why silicon is most widely used semiconducting material? So the reason, or they may give you some of the options, and the best and correct option will be its availability in the nature. So this is about uh, three classifications: conductor, semiconductor. And 
can speak. Okay. Now, uh, when we consider about conductor, semiconductor, and insulator, as you said, uh, their conductivity uh, is the main parameter which classifies semiconductor, insulator, and we have conductor. Now, as far as conductor is considered, so the most important parameter is uh, by based on which we can define it as conductor is Eg. That stands for energy gap will be zero electron volt. Note down this important point. Energy gap of conductor is zero electron volt. Now, what is energy gap? That we'll discuss in the next lecture. But for this particular lecture, we have to remember the energy gap is zero electron volt. Now, as far as the insulator is considered, the energy gap typically will be 6 electron volt and for conductor or semiconductor as we have two different materials one is silicon and one is germanium so their energy gaps are again different <coughs> typically uh, for silicon we have 1.21 electron volt and for germanium we have 0 0.85 electron Note down karke rakhega. the energy gap of silicon is 1.21 electron volt and that of germanium is 0 0.85 electron volt. This is an important point of discussion as far as semiconductor is concerned. And uh, this is at 0 degree Kelvin. Again, important point. This is at what? 0 degree Kelvin. Uh, sorry, uh, there is a, a small correction. Actually, the energy gap of germanium is 0 0.75 and for silicon is 1.21 electron volt. Now, this is at 0 degree. Now, when I consider across uh, 300 degree Kelvin, so the energy gap changes. And as far as <coughs> silicon is considered, it is 1.12 electron volt and for germanium it is 0 0.72 electron volt. Now, we have to remember these values because there might be a question on uh, energy gap of silicon is at 0 degree Kelvin and at 300 degree Kelvin. So, in that case, we have to answer this question also. Okay, so you can expect a question on this also uh, energy gap of uh, conductor is, energy gap of insulator is, energy gap of silicon as well as for germanium. I hope you have understood uh, whatever we have studied uh, till now uh, regarding conductor, insulator. And semiconductor. Now, coming to the next point, our main area of focus is definitely I will change the color of paint so that we can have. A clear glimpse about the next point of discussion. Now we have to discuss about uh, the next important point that is about the semiconductors. Okay. Uh, remember, semiconductors are a major role player in case of electron series, and therefore the entire terminology revolves around the semiconductors. Now basically, we have two types of semiconductors. Number one is called as intrinsic. semiconductor and the other type of semiconductor is called as extrinsic semiconductor. What are the two types? So we have first type as intrinsic and the other type as extrinsic semiconductor. Now how will you define intrinsic and extrinsic that is also a point of discussion. So as far as intrinsic semiconductors are considered the Pure form of semiconductor are called intrinsic semiconductor. What is the definition? The pure form of semiconductors are called as the intrinsic semiconductor. That is whatever may be available in the nature, whatever uh, uh, semiconductor materials are available in the nature, they are available in the purest form. And that semiconductors are basically called as intrinsic semiconductors. Now, their examples are same. Uh, we have two types of semiconductors. 
number one is silicon and other one is germanium. So they are also called as intrinsic semiconductor. Now the interesting point about intrinsic semiconductor is that at zero degree Kelvin, all the intrinsic semiconductors are in situs. What is it? At zero degree Kelvin, they all are in situs. So as we go of increasing the temperature, some of the electrons from the outer orbit uh, that we have studied in the last picture, they get ejected and due to which they become free and they start supporting the energy and slowly they become a part of semiconductor. So again an important point at 0 degree Kelvin all intrinsic semiconductors behaves as insulin. Remember most important point at 0 degree Kelvin all the intrinsic semiconductors works as insulin. Now when I come across extrinsic semiconductors so we have again two types one is called as extrinsic n type semiconductor and the other one is called as extrinsic p type what are your types we have n type extrinsic semiconductor and p type extrinsic semiconductor now let us define one by one what is mean by n type and what is mean by p type semiconductor so i'm writing it here the first type we have to use will be Extrinsic and type semiconductor. How can you define this extrinsic and type semiconductor? When impurities like phosphorus, arsenic, bismuth, or antimony. are added to intrinsic semiconductor what is the definition when impurity is like phosphorus arsenic bismuth or antimony are added to some intrinsic semiconductor it is called extrinsic and type Okay, so what we have done, we have added impurities in the pure semiconductor to form extrinsic n type semiconductor. Now, here another important point comes into picture is that uh, extrinsic semiconductors are also called as impure semiconductors. We have to remember this point also. Why they are called as impure? Because impurities are added into the pure semiconductor. So they are called as extrinsic n type semiconductor. Now, here in most of the uh, exams, uh, they are asked uh, which type of impurities are added to form extrinsic n type semiconductor. So, we have four types typically phosphorus, arsenic, bismuth, and antimony. Now, uh, how will you remember these four names? So, for that, case, we have to remember one trick that is called as power. That is called as what? Oh. It stands for phosphorus, A for arsenic, A for antimony, B for bismuth. Remember, PAP we have to remember for extrinsic n type semiconductor. Okay, now why they are called as n type? That is also important or a point of discussion. So basically, uh, when we add pentavalent impurities, see these all are pentavalent impurities. So I will write it here when impurities they are nothing but penta. Valent. That means in the outermost orbit they have five electrons. So if you take phosphorus, phosphorus has an atomic number of 50. So when I consider its electronic configuration, we have first orbit two electrons, second orbit eight electrons, and outer orbit five electrons. Okay. So even if you take arsenic, this number of you will find that in the outermost orbit we have five electrons. So now what is the procedure? So basically we have adding this impurity to semiconductor like silicon. Okay. So what I can do, I will put it phosphorus over here at the center point and let's suppose silicon uh, is surrounded or we are simply mixing them up. So I am writing like this 
and they are they are having four electrons so i can place four electrons we have seen electronic configuration of silicon it will be two eight and a four so i, I guess i am putting it like this four electrons and this is how this is okay and as far as phosphor is considered we have five electrons one two three four and let's put it like this Okay, so as we have seen how the covalent bonds are formed, so we can write a covalent bond between these two, between these two, and uh, these two electrons, and similarly in these two electrons. Okay, so this is the way in which uh, the covalent bonds are formed. However, if you observe over here, we have an excess of the electron. We have an excess of electron. And as it has an excess of electron, it can donate, and hence such kind of semiconductors are basically called as an type, or we can call it as negative type. What is it? Called as negative type. So, n type extrinsic semiconductor. Okay. So I hope you understood extrinsic and type semiconductor. Now here, the what are the points that we have to remember? Number one is the material pentavalent impurities. Example. Wow, that is phosphorus, arsenic, and tungsten. Second one, pentavalent impurities. It will have five electrons in the outermost one. Third, majority charge. Now, if you see it here, we have excess of electron. Therefore, majority charge carriers will be the so one more question is that what are the majority charge carriers in extrinsic and types? What are they? They are going to be the okay. And uh, related with minority, so we have minority charge carriers. Now what is hole? That we are going to discuss in the next lecture. For today's lecture, we just remember minority charge carriers are holes and majority charge carriers are Okay, so this is about extrinsic and type semiconductor. Now we'll concentrate on the second point, and that will be our extrinsic p type semiconductor. So I'm writing it here. Now a p type semiconductor. Now definition again. Uh, when impurities, that is trivalent impurities, like. <coughs> Trivalent impurities like boron, aluminium, then we have gallium and indium are added to pure semiconductor. It is called as P type semiconductor. Now again, there are four elements that we have to remember, and they are boron, aluminium, gallium, and indium. And remember, they all have trivalent. That means they have three electrons in the outermost orbit. Now, how will you remember these four examples? So I can just put it here: their initials: boron P, e, aluminium A, gallium G, indium I. So it becomes baj. It becomes what baj. In Maharashtra, uh, for meaning of the power bhaji. So, in uh, n type semiconductor, upon power bhaji, just pronounce it as power and p type made bhaji. Boron, aluminium, gallium, and n. There will be, or there must be, or there may be a possibility that such kind of examples will be asked for the, uh, your, ex uh, your examinations. Okay. Now, as far as the structure is considered, how can you draw this? So, I can put it here silicon. And let's suppose aluminium. Aluminium. Aluminium is here. Aluminium is. Now we can put uh, either of this. Uh, so we have three electrons in the outermost orbit. So, sorry, uh, <coughs> make a pattern. Uh, we have aluminium here. Silicon. 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 And here also silicon. So we know that uh, silicon will have four electrons. So just replace like this. One, two, three, four. 
<coughs> one, two, three, four, and the same here. One, two, three, and four. As far as aluminium is considered, we have three electrons, so we'll place them. Aluminium have three electrons. This is one. Let's only use two. This is three. <coughs> now maybe you have a question, sir. Uh, how how will you predict that it has three electrons? So remember, aluminium has a uh, Atomic number 13. So we have uh, first orbit two electrons, second orbit eight electrons, and in the third orbit three electrons. Two plus eight, ten plus three. Sorry. Other of the early one video, they create a pitchly video named this thing. Kata is the first electron configuration. So I will be a bit closer. Up uh, we know that when two electrons are in there, uh, they will form covalent bond. So this two will form covalent bond. Similarly, this two will form covalent bond. Uh, to see it here, we have this electron which is unfused. So, what happens? This electron will be donated over here. Now, we have seen when we lose an electron, it becomes positively charged. What is it? When we donate an electron, it becomes what? Positively charged. And therefore, uh, such kind of semiconductors are called as P5 cell. Okay. Now again, uh, point of discussion over here. <coughs> Number one, <coughs> we have uh, trivalent impurities. Example, boron, aluminium, gallium, and baji. Uh, third one, now, uh, which are majority charge carriers and which are minority charge carriers. Now, as far as <coughs> the P type semiconductors are considered majority charge carriers will be different than that of the n type semiconductor. So here we have majority charge carriers as coal and minority charge carrier will be okay, so they are exactly reverse of n type semiconductors. Now again okay, here the most important point of discussion will be uh, P type semiconductors are also called as the question of open chapters. The P type semiconductors are also called as acceptor impurity. They are also called as what? Acceptor impurity. Now, why acceptor? Is because it is accepting one electron. Okay. So, as it is accepting one electron, it is called as acceptor impurity. Uh, and the reverse, in case of the Intrinsic, uh, sorry, extrinsic n type semiconductor. So it is donating one electron. Yes, so the flip number point will be it is called as donor. It is also called as a donor. So this is about uh, the introduction of semiconducting devices. I hope you have a video. If you have a video, please like video and like subscribe. Karna. In next video, we will see the technology. Thank you.